My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and in today's Everyday Office video, what I want to do is show you a multi-step process that will get you a chart that is a flexible data set. What I mean by that is that anybody who wants to can come in and decide to include more or fewer of the records, a different date range, and decide what is going to be included in the chart and what's not included in the chart. Now, as you can see here, I've got it set up so that um, it recognizes the first date that we're interested in, which is 1-1-2017, and it shows the first four entries because it says the number four right here. If I were to type in eight, for example, it would increase and include all of those entries there. Again, starting at 1-1-17, but if I start at 1-3-17, I want it to slide down to 1317 and include the eight entries from that point. And I want to include that in my chart. So how do I make that happen? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to control these two values through the use of spin buttons so people can increase and decrease the initial date and increase and decrease the number of entries. And then I'm going to use these two values to inform what they call a named range using the offset function to make that chart. So let's start off with how do I control the number of entries with a spin button? Well, if you don't have a developer tab at the top of the screen, make sure that you go to file in the top left hand corner, trace down to options, and select customize ribbon. From here, you can easily click the checkbox for the Developer tab and enable that option. So once you have that Developer tab at the top of your screen, make sure that you go to the Insert button, which looks like a little toolbox there, and from Form Controls, you look across to the fourth entry, which is a Spin button. So I want to have a Spin button that controls the number of entries, that makes it 5 or 8 or 10. So I'll go ahead and click on spin button here and use it to draw a little spin button. Now you'll see why in a moment, but I'm going to make this over here in the G column instead of the F column. And you'll, it'll be very obvious why I did this in a few seconds. Okay, at this point the spin button is in here, but it's not actually doing anything. So I'm going to right click on that spin button and choose format control. And I do want to link it to a specific cell cell number E3. Okay, so the current value, let's go ahead and set the current value to five. That'll be the value when we open up the spreadsheet. And at, at minimum, I want to include, let's say two data points in my chart. So I'll put in the number two there. And then for the maximum value, let's say at most we want um, a dozen data points in our chart. So we want this to go between two and 12. So I click okay. And now using that little spin button there, I can increase the size of the range all the way up to 12, but just up to 12 and all the way down to two, but then it stops at two. So that's good. I'm liking this setup so far. Now I'd like to do the exact same thing for this initial date value, but unfortunately the thing that is in cell E2 is actually a number value like 42,700 and something, and the spin button can only go up to the number 30,000. So uh, we can't control that directly, but what we can do is we can come over here to cell F2, put in the number zero right? And in cell E2, we can calculate what date the initial date is by taking equal sign first possible date, 1-1-2017, and then adding this zero, right? And so with that, I have 1-1-2017, and if the spin button were to take this number and make it a five, let's say, now it's 1-6-2017, and if the spin button made it a, an eight, now it's 1-9-2017, and so you can see what I've done here. Instead of affecting the date directly, I went ahead and built a date by taking the first possible date and adding a, a number to it. All right, so now I can use the spin button to control this value right here instead of controlling the date directly. 
So again, developer tab, down to the insert button and spin button. Again, I insert that spin button over in the G column, like so. Right click on it, choose format control. I want to link this to the cell F2. All right, current value should be zero, minimum value should be zero, and let's say the maximum value is, oh, we're gonna keep it within this year, so like 360 or something like that. Okay, so I can go up to 360, which will definitely push it off of this table altogether, but you know, we'll be fine there. Okay, so click okay, and there we go. We start off, if this is a zero, we start off at 1, 1, 2017, and as we increase, and that becomes a 1, or a 2, or a 3, we see that range slide down. That's what we're looking for right there. And this is why I put the spin buttons in the G column, because now I'm going to go to this F column and hide this, because it's completely unnecessary to see it. All right, so now I can use the up and down buttons, and it looks like the spin button is controlling that E cell directly, but actually it's controlling the F cell, which is then controlling blah, blah, blah. Okay, now that we've got this, we have all the pieces we need to build a chart based off of not a reference to these cells, but rather a calculation that says, well, I want you to start here and I want you to go this far down, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to build two named ranges using this offset function right here. We're going to create a named range for the date column and then another named range for the value column. Now, as you can see, the offset function has five elements to it. First is where do we start? Well, we're going to start at the head of the date column for the first one. And for the second one, we'll start at the head of the value column. So we'll say A1 and B1. Then it says, how far down should I go? Well, I want you to go down this column right here until you hit the first entry that matches up with what's in cell E2. So I'm going to use a match function to say, go down until you find where 112017 is equal to 112017. Perfect. Then it says, how far to the right should you go? Well, we're not going to go to the right because we want to stay in the date column. Okay. How tall should I be? Well, that's easy to answer because I know how many entries we should include, the number of entries right here. So this will tell us how tall we're supposed to be. And how wide are we supposed to be? Well, we're talking about the date column, so that is one column wide. So let's go ahead and build that. I go to the Formulas tab at the top of the screen, click on the Name Manager, and I'm going to create a new named range called Dates. Okay, so the name will be called Dates, and it will refer to not a specific cell, but rather to a calculation. So that calculation goes offset, open parentheses. To be totally safe, let's start off in dollar sign A, dollar sign one, cell A1 of this spreadsheet. Now, when we start off there, we know that we're not gonna start with the value that says date up at the top. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to slide down until we find 1-1-2017. So we match the location of cell E2, right? So look for 1-1-2017 in, let's just go dollar sign A, colon dollar sign a so that says okay the value that's in cell e2 it's going to be found somewhere in the a column i don't know where yet but somewhere in there and comma zero that's to let us know that we are looking for an exact match not a close enough match without going over or close enough match without going under uh, just an exact match is the only thing i'm interested in and then i close parentheses now the problem is that if i think this through the match function tells me where 112017 is in the A column. It'll tell me it's in the second position, uh, but I only want it to go down one to get there. So this has got to be a little minus, minus one right there. Okay, so the actual position is not where it goes down and counts that it's the second position. It says go down one, so I have to do a little minus one there to, to massage the data. Okay, next up. How far to the right should I slide? 
you should never go to the right. We're not going to the right here. We're staying in that date column. Zero. Okay. Next question. How tall should I be? How many cells should I include? Well, this is very easy. Um, I actually wrote it directly into cell E3. So I'm just going to select cell E3. That will tell you how tall to be. Comma. How wide should I be? Uh, just be the width of the column one cell wide. Close the parentheses. And then I click OK. And I do it again for values. So I'll go to New. Type in Values. Oops. Values. All right. So this is equal to the offset function starting now at cell dollar sign $B dollar sign one. All right, so starting at cell B1, how, uh, how far down should I slide? Well, I don't know what value I need to slide down to, but I do know the date. So I'm going to use the exact same match function, looking for cell E2 in the dollar sign A colon dollar sign A column comma zero, find me the exact match. And when you do, close parentheses, subtract one, because I know that that's gonna count one too many cells. So go ahead and do a little minus one there. Okay, good. Uh, how far to the right should I go? Zero, you should not go to the right. Comma, how tall should I be? Again, I wrote it right on the spreadsheet. You should be eight cells tall. Comma, how wide should I be? You should be one column wide, close parentheses. And that now are, those are two named ranges for the two sets of values that are going to go into my chart. I hit okay, I hit close. And now I do something I almost never do, which is go to insert and make myself a chart without having any data selected at all. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Okay. So I have my nice empty chart with literally nothing in it at all. And uh, let me just take the line off of it. It makes me happier. Okay. I need to tell it where the data is. So I go to the select data button up at the top of the screen. And it says, well, I don't know what the series are. And I don't know what the axis is labeled as. Well, the series is all the values. So I'll click add here. And it's uh, the series name right up here at the top will be value. And the series values are equal sign. The, the uh, tab at the bottom you can see is called chart size, exclamation point. And there's a named range called values with an S on the end of it. I'll hit OK. And you can see right there, you see eight values get put onto the chart. Things are looking pretty good so far. Now I click edit right here and I say, oh, uh, that's equal sign off, uh, excuse me, not offset, excuse me. It's equal sign chart size, the chart size uh, sheet, exclamation point. The named range is called dates and click OK. And there it is. I hit OK. And now watch. It says the initial date is 1-1-2017. There should be eight entries. 1-1-2017, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight entries. So I'll increase the number of entries, increase the number of entries, increase the number of entries until I get to 12. Remember the spinner button tops out at 12. And I can increase the initial date to make it 1-2, 1-3, 1-4, 1-5. And then decrease the number of entries like so. And so using a spinner button, two spinner buttons actually, using a calculated date, using the offset function to build two named ranges, I can build a dynamic chart that includes exactly as much data as you're looking for to.